Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT Varsity. So as part of this topic, we will see one of the most important aspect of uh, Scala, which is functions. Scala is a functional programming language, which means it follows uh, functional programming paradigm. Other programming paradigms are imperative and logical. So Java is an example of imperative programming uh, language. I don't want to get into too many details, uh, uh, such as differences between imperative and functional. But here are the few advantages of functional programming, uh, simple reasoning principles. So if you uh, think uh, uh, in mathematical, in the way of mathematical functions, you will be able to uh, write functions and high level functions uh, using functional programming language. It will give us better modularity and uh, uh, the most important aspect of it is uh, it leverages multi-core for, for uh, parallelism and also cloud computing. One of the major difference between imperative and functional is the mutability of the variables. In imperative, uh, typically the variables are mutable, uh, whereas in functional programming languages, we will reduce the mutability up to considerable extent. Okay, we make most of the variables immutable and, uh, uh, and try to uh, use the functional programming uh, which will give us benefit uh, at the time of uh, uh, parallel processing, wherein we don't need to maintain the state uh, by developing complex multi-threaded programming. Functions are expressions, not statements. Functions can be nested. You can have multiple functions within the same function. Functions can be assigned to variables. Uh, functions can be returned and also passed as arguments. We will see examples of these things as we, uh, as we move forward. For others, we will see functions when we talk about tasks as part of this topic itself. Even though Scala supports uh, both call by value and call by name, default is call by value. It is also recommended to use call by value. Do not to worry too much about difference at this time. So um, you can develop functions um, and uh, define the parameters uh, as call by value or call by name. And uh, you don't need to worry too much about uh, it at this time. Uh, just use call by value. If it is required, I will try to cover call by name later and also I will try to uh, provide the differences between call by value and call by name. So uh, now we will try to see the syntax of the function and try to write uh, functions for factorial Fibonacci and also we'll try to write recursive functions and uh, a little bit complex functions uh, uh, where we will be using nested as well. Okay, so let's start with factorial. So the syntax of the function will start with def, okay, which means definition. And then you have to give the uh, function name. In this case, I want to develop a function called fact. It takes one parameter, factorial uh, takes one parameter, and then uh, you have to um, loop uh, from from this value to 1 uh, in uh, uh, in uh, decrement and uh, in uh, uh, descending order and then multiply each of the number for for example if it is 3 3 factorial means 3 into 2 into 1 similarly 4 factorial means 4 into 3 into 2, in, 2 into 1. So let us write the factorial function here. So it starts with def and then fact and uh, we have to pass one argument which is of type integer and then uh, written type is not mandatory. If you want to define written type, you have to use colon and then um, give the written type. You can say int here and then equal to and then uh, start the braces and then you can uh, create a variable called result let us assign to 1 and then uh, loop from i to 1 by minus 1 okay so if it is 3 it will loop uh, one one at a time, uh, three, two, one, etc. And e will be three for the first iteration, two for the second iteration, and one for the third iteration. 
and then you can say result equal to result into e and also i think you can say res equal to res multiplied uh, asterisk equal to e okay which is similar to res equal to res into e and then we want to return the result and then hit enter now the function is created and now if i say uh, uh, val a equal to 5 and then say fact of 5 it will give the factorial of 5 which is 120 so this is simple factorial function if you want to write it in recursive fashion it's pretty straightforward you can say fact r i int again uh, for recursive functions the written type is mandatory because the last line of the code is nothing but a function call hence the written type is mandatory in this case i am declaring it as integer and then equal to we can write it in single line so we don't need to start the braces we just have to say if i equal to 1 return 1 else return factor of i minus 1 okay so i am decrementing and uh, calling the factorial function in recursive fashion and hit enter now the function is created and now if i say factor uh, factorial recursive of 5 okay there is a mistake in this function i have to say i into factorial of i minus 1 now you will get 120 so every iteration it will call um, uh, i into uh, it will call like this so uh, 5 factorial equal to 5 into 4 factorial and then five into four into three factorial five into four into three into two factorial five into four into three into two into one because i equal to 1 it returns 1 and then it uh, it will go back uh, as 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 which will be like this 5 into 4 into 6 5 into 24 120. So this is how the rec recursive function will work. I am deleting this one. Okay, and on top of this thing, the third task is to develop the Fibonacci. Uh, so develop a function which will print number of elements in a Fibonacci series, where the number of elements will be passed as parameter. So here. I am going to the paste mode and then I am developing the function called FIBO. It takes one parameter which is of type integer and it returns nothing. Hence you can say colon space unit or you can just ignore it also. It all depends upon what will be returned in the end. Uh, and now here I want to create two variables p equal to 0 the previous value curve equal to 1 current value so Fibonacci is nothing but um, uh, the, uh, the series of elements which starts with 0 and 1 and then the next element will be uh, sum of uh, the previous two numbers so in this case the third element will be 0 plus 1 which will be 1 and fourth element will be 1 plus 1 which will be 2 and fifth element will be 1 plus 2 which will be 3 and sixth element will be 2 plus 3 which will be 5 and so on and so forth okay now i am printing 
these values because we have to print these also and then for e starting from 2 to i minus 1 because um, in this case we already created two elements here okay and hence actually we can say 3 to i this is much, this is better 3 to i because the first two elements are already uh, printed uh, in this previous statement and now we have to uh, start from the third element that's why i'm saying 3 to i in this case we have to just increment one at a time so we don't need to say by one uh, to increment to one at a time and then in the for loop okay i have to create one more variable let me do that paste where this equal to 0 I am just initializing to 0 and then for e 3 to i this equal to 3 plus current 3 equal to current because we have to move uh, one at a time so that we, we can uh, get last two values so now I am assigning uh, the current value to previous one and the uh, result to current so that we can in the next iteration we can add last two values current equal to result and then print okay now the function is created and if you say FIBO of 10 and hit enter you can see the 10 elements starting from 0 and 1 the third element is addition of these two values fourth element is addition of these two values fifth element is addition of these two values sixth element is addition of these two values and seventh element is addition of these two values and so on and so forth okay so this is the uh, example for Fibonacci series and uh, finally I want to uh, create one more function uh, which will be named as NCR given two arguments and n and r compute NCR which is nothing but combinations formula and the formula is n factorial by n minus r factorial uh, multiplied by r factorial okay so this is the function which we need to implement so here uh, ncr is a higher order function on top of factorial so what i have done i have created the function okay ncr it takes two parameters n and r and it returns um, integer and we don't need to specify in this case i want to create a nested function or we can actually create the function separately also like this and we can invoke that function but in some cases you don't need to expose uh, uh, some of the functions you just create those functions for the modularity rather than uh, re reuse if you create the functions for just modularity purposes within the function itself you can define the function okay so in this case i am uh, creating function factorial and then i am pasting this code here which we have seen earlier okay and then finally i want to return factorial of n divided by factorial of n minus r multiplied by factorial of r and then control D now you can see uh, MCR of 6 comma 3 
which will be 20 because 6 factorial is 720 divided by uh, 3 factorial is 6 multiplied by again 3 factorial is 6 720 by 36 is 20 if I say MCR of 6 comma 2 it will be 720 divided by uh, 4 factorial into 2 factorial 4 factorial is 24 and uh, uh, 2 factorial is 2 ok so 720 by 24 into 2 which will be uh, 720 by 48 which will be I think 15 ok yes it is 15 so this is how you can actually write nested functions ok in this case if you want to use factorial uh, in other in other areas of your application then you can actually write it as a separate function like this or if you don't want to expose you just create a nested function like this so that being said it's just introduction to functions and i hope you will be comfortable in writing functions make sure you understand that the functions has to start with the keyword called def give the name for the function and define the arguments these are not variables hence we cannot use val or where in this case they are these are just arguments or parameters you just have to give the name of the parameter and the type of the parameter and here these are all call by value each parameter is called by value scala supports call by uh, name also but don't worry about call by name at this time uh, and then uh, uh, if you want you can define the data type with uh, uh, that type of the return value by saying colon and then uh, the type of it if you don't uh, then uh, uh, it will be inferred based upon what you are returning in this case it returns integer and hence <coughs> the return type will be integer automatically and then I created the nested function and then um, I created the expression uh, to compute the NCR and it will be returned uh, as the return type of it is integer the final uh, uh, return type of the function is also integer now you can uh, uh, extend uh, the Fibonacci example further and uh, given one argument which takes an integer uh, return true if the number belongs to Fibonacci series else return false so you have to write in Fibonacci function if we if you pass 13 uh, it should return true because it belongs to the Fibonacci series if you give 24, 24 does not belong to the Fibonacci series, hence it should return false. So I will leave it as an exercise to you and don't use println statements and all those things. Uh, you just have to um, come up with the uh, Fibonacci uh, series and then uh, compare your uh, uh, parameter and see if it is Fibonacci or not, Fibonacci number or not or if the number belongs to Fibonacci series or not. Okay, I will leave it as an exercise to you. If you have any question or if you want me to review your code, just click on this discuss.itverse.com and paste your code. I will just review and uh, give my comments. That being said, uh, as part of the next topic, we will get on to the object-oriented concepts. Functions is very, very important and we will improvise as we proceed further and explore uh, uh, the other areas of uh, uh, programming concepts of Scala and also when we get into the spark. Thank you. Bye.